I mean, I'm, I'm from Maine. I may sound a little bit southern, but that's because uh, I pick up accents as I go, and that's how I've lost my maniac accent. You know? <laughs> but I've been all over this, this country. I've been from Maine, that's where I was born and raised. Been in Cal Connecticut, went to California, then I was blessed to go to Missouri, and I found my wife in Missouri. She was forced out of Indianapolis here, Indiana here, to Missouri. That's where God brought us together. It's a marvelous thing that he does. The work he does, you know. But uh, right now we're living back living in Indianapolis, and if you've been watching the news, it's pretty terrible up there. Yes. I mean, just a couple nights ago, within 48 hours, well, within 16 hours, there's eight murders. Within 48 hours, there's another one, so there's nine total in 48 hours up there. Yeah. Yeah. And then this morning, we've seen the news, and just a few blocks from my house, there was fire where the parent, two parents were killed, two kids were killed, and two other kids were in the hospital because of this fire. So there's a terrible thing happening in this world, and and uh, I just opened up the book, you know, to look, and I went to one page, didn't see anything there, the Lord didn't draw me, uh, flopped over and opened up the Psalms, and there's Psalms 40, just said, and just stood out in, in my eyes, and I started to read it, and I said, this is for me too. I said, clap your hands, all you people, shout unto the Lord, shout unto God with a voice of triumph, you know, because we have to keep that positive attitude. As a Christian, as a Christian, we have to keep that positive attitude. And it's kind of hard, especially if you're living in Indianapolis with all the stuff going on, you know. And and it's not just Indianapolis, it, it happens everywhere, you know. People say, oh, you live on the east side, that's a bad side. No, it doesn't matter whether you're east, north, south, even Martinsville, you know, there's terrible things happening. The Lord is most high and terrible. You know, I want to Specify the terrible thing. It's like the kids nowadays, they're, they're saying, well, that's sick, you know, that's bad, which actually means it's good. And in this instance, you know, that means it's good because the Lord is terribly good in my life. You know, He's most wonderful in my life. What He's done with me, that, I mean, I started doing drugs when I was 11 years old. Okay? I've done a lot of drugs. I've done, when I was 16, I, I used to take acid and keep. People would overdose on the amount of acid I, I could take at that amount of time. And it's surprising that my brain cells are still functioning. <laughs> Sometimes they don't, but you know, that comes with old age. <laughs> Zach like that. But you know, he's a terribly good God. That's the whole thing about it. You know? He is so wonderful to us because we have a life, but as long as we live that life for him. We need to obey our Father who art in heaven. You know? Our parents on earth may tell us to do the wrong things, you know. We may have to do it because they are our parents and they're you know and they're telling us to do it. The law may tell us we have to do bad things, but that's because, you know, they don't understand the word of God. But as long as we understand the word of God and we function in, in our lives as a as a child of God, we can do many wonderful things. Yes, amen. You know. Our, our grandchildren are just grow. As, as with us, you know, when, when we're taking our grandchildren every weekend, you know, we, we go to our church, our church is closed down because there wasn't enough people to keep the doors open. It was a big old church and it was hard to heat. $1,700 for one month's electrical bill, heat bill. Okay, so you, you can't keep a church open with 16 people in a $1,700 bill, you know. So God, you know, saw fit for us to start coming down here. Which I don't mind. I love coming down. I love my dad. I call him my dad. He's I'm a Davis. He's a Davis. My wife was born a Davis. Wouldn't you like to be a Davis too? <laughs> Zach Davis. But God is good. He, he is a wonderful God. And all these things that are going on in, in the in the earth right now is just kind of described right here. He says. He shall subdue the people under under us, the nation under our feet. Right? Because that's where we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be walking on the clouds. We need to be no matter how bad the day is, we gotta get that smile. And that's that's where the, the preaching's coming to me this morning because I'm having a real fit at work. You know. I work for the city of Indianapolis housing. And it's it's a it's a tough situation I'm in because you know I work hard. And there's a bunch of people that don't work hard. You know, and they're trying to make me look bad. 
You know, I do my job every day, and they're trying to make me look bad. And it's, they're the people under my feet, and I got to remember that. You know, because they've transferred me, and I got to go to work in this building where these people are are stabbing me in the back. In fact, the guy that got me the job is supposed to be my friend. I think he's the one just doing the twisting. They pushed it in, and he's twisting it. And i got to go deal with them this week because I've transferred to their building. So this word is for me. So it's probably for me and probably a few others out here because you're probably dealing with the same stuff I am because God wouldn't have brought me to this if it wasn't for, for me and other people. So he shall subdue the people under us and the nation under our feet. So remember that. We're to walk on the clouds. We've got to keep that smile no matter how bad things get. That's right. He shall choose our inheritance for us. Thank you, Lord. Because if we had to do it ourselves, we're too stupid to figure that one out. You know? We, we, uh, we look at the neighbors. You know, everything's greener on the other side. The grass is greener on the other side of the fence. And no. It's not always greener on the other side of the fence. I, I, there was a guy that I used to work with that he, he went out and bought this $25,000 boat so he could fish and do water skiing and everything. And he could get away from his wife and the arguing. But the only problem is when he got back to work, got back to his house, you know, his wife's going through the bills. She's trying to figure out how to pay for this boat that he got, you know. So the arguments got worse. He might have a nice boat, might be able to go out and do fish and everything, but the grass didn't get any greener for him, you know. So be careful what you wish for. <coughs> He shall choose our inheritance for us. The, ex, the excellence, uh, excellency of Jacob, whom he loves. And that word seal, that means meditate on that word. You know, think about it. You know, you got to think about how he's chosen our inheritance. Not we, not us. Amen. You know, my mom and dad have passed away and, and I've inherited a house. I've been inherited, well, my dad passed away, I've inherited the, his truck. My mom's passed away. I've inherited the, the house that, which me and my dad built, and and her car. You know? So I didn't choose the inheritance. I'd rather have my parents back. Yeah, yeah. Sure. But he's blessed us, you know, with with good gifts. You know, my parents worked hard all their lives, paint the house off, so I get a house free and clear. Amen. You know? It's in Maine. Yeah, it's in Maine. It's a beautiful place to go, isn't it? She, she wasn't too happy about it. It was cold. The first time we went up there, she wasn't too crazy about it. She, it's cold. And I, then we went up for Christmas time and, and uh, got her to go do some sledding. She found out it was fun to do some sledding. You don't get cold when you're playing in the snow. Ask the kids. They'll tell you. If they're out playing in the snow, you say, it's freezing out there. We need to get them in. And they're just out there. You pull the clothes off and they're sweating when they come in. You know? And took her on a snow machine ride. Oh, she was screaming. I got her on the back of the snow machine. I hit that bar, floored it all the way across the across the field, and then we're airborne a couple of times. I hear her screaming behind me, and I hit the other side of the field, stopped. I figured hey, she'd come smack the heck out of me. Of course, she's having a fun time, and we stopped. And she says, "I'm glad there ain't no bugs out, because I've been eating a whole bunch. She just, she just had fun." And um, we screamed around the field and went back. It took me several. Quite a bit, quite a bit of time to talk her into going out on the snow machine. It was my nieces who were seven and eight years old out riding on the snow machine. She watched them, so she figured she'd give it a try. But anyways, enough of that. God has gone up with a with a shout. The Lord with a sound of the trumpet. That, that sound of the trumpet. That's the one thing that I can't wait to hear. You know, because that means that means this this tour of duty. You know. Is done here in, in, in the Amen. army of the Lord down here, and then we get to relax, you know. Sing our praise, yeah. Sing praises to God. And that's why the song comes in. Sing his praise. Just praise his name, you know. Because he will make everything right. No matter how wrong it seems, you know, no matter what you gotta go through. You know. I've had I had to spend time in jail because I've done something stupid. You know? But he got me through it. He got me through it. You know? And he made me a better person because of it. I could have been angry at the world and say I didn't deserve this and, and been mad at everything and everybody. But you know, we get what we deserve sometimes and we gotta swallow that, swallow our own pride is what it is. We gotta give up our, ourselves, you know, give up our cross and take up his. Yes. You know, because it's not about us. Amen. 
There ain't nothing in our lives that's really about us. Amen. Except as long as we keep our lives straight and walking in His love. <clears throat> sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. And that's, that's what I, I like most about it. I love singing for the Lord. You know, he's a wonderful God. We had a friend that, that uh, was all about music and everything. And if I tried to sing a worldly song, he didn't like my voice. But we went one time to visit him and we brought some of our music, our CDs that we could sing to, and I sang one of my songs and he just jaw dropped his own. And it's the Spirit of God that has brought forth the voice that he could hear. And I think it blessed him, you know, until the day he died. He he was always a friend. He he loved me. He called me. We talked, you know. And he passed away. He's gone to the Lord. We just got to keep singing His praises. Yes. Yes. But God is King of all the earth. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. It doesn't matter whether we have Obama, Clinton, or whoever else comes into this, this country as president. We just got to remember, we have one King. Amen. And that is God. Amen. doesn't matter what they do, what they say. doesn't matter what our governments do. You know, because you look at them, they're, they're not leading by example. They're, That's right. You know, because they're they're saying do what we say, but not what we do. Because right. you, know, you know, all those senators walked off their job, went across the borders to you know across into the Illinois to to hang out, so they didn't have to do this vote. How many of you would still have a job if you walked off your job and went 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 to place and just didn't go into work? True, right? They walked off their jobs. I say we should have fired them, <laughs> but. But God, God is King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. So you have to understand that that He is He is in charge of our lives. He's the one. He's the one that has brought us forth. He has given us purpose in life. There's people that walk around this world that don't have a purpose. These young kids growing up, they have no respect. They're not taught respect. In fact, you watch some of these TV shows that they program towards the kids nowadays and it's showing you showing the kids how brilliant they are how they save the day and the adults running around like stupid dummies you know we need to go back to father knows best and hazel and all those old shows where the morals were right you know we're good and triumphed you know you got all these vampire shows and stuff you know and just teaching the kids how evil is good. Evil is good. And it's just drawing them away from what, what is right in the world. Yeah. You see it. I, I, in Indianapolis, I got to witness the second murder of the year. A black shooting a black. You know? I, I, if you notice, in the streets, it's the black shooting the blacks. And then you got white kids that are all strung out on dope and, and watching, playing violent video games. They, they're going into the, the schools and the, and the businesses and shooting people. So you got black killing blacks and you got young, dumb white kids killing mass murder, doing mass murder. It, it's, this world is terrible. And it's not, a, not terrible as far as God is. It's terrible as far as it's dirty, it's nasty, it is bad. And there's no misconfusing that, 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 you know, life in the, in the United States today is tough. But we got to get back to God, you know. Yes. Our forefathers founded this country on the, on the foundings of God's Word. Amen. And they've done everything they can to push God's Word True. out. Since, since God's been taken out of school, look at what's happened. Right. I grew up saying the Pledge of Allegiance and... and, and, and Praying in school and everything else, they don't do it anymore. Some schools do, and I, I give them props. I mean, God bless them. You know, and those children that learn from that, God bless them. But the farther that the United States pushes God out, the more we have to grab onto Him and pull Him back in. Amen. You know, we have to be that witness, we have to be that testimony. We have to let them know that God is good and He is the one King that we can truly count on. Hallelujah. This is all off the cuff, so you're going to have to bear with me on this. God reigneth over the heathen. Thank you, Lord. I wish He'd do a little more with them. 
God sits upon the throne of His holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, and even the people of God, and the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God, and He is greatly exalted. So that's what we got to do. We got to just go through our days and exalt God in our lives. We have to let the people around us, our fellow workers, we have to let our family members. My mom spent 29 years praying for me. I was hit by a car, actually. Kind of, I hit the car because I walked into it. At four years old, I was waiting for the Sunday school bus. Me and my, bro my brother and my sister were standing out there, and I was waiting for the Sunday school bus. And I walked into the side of this car. And if you know those old cars, you know you stuck your hand through the door handle and pushed it. Yep. The door handle sliced right through my nose. I had a scar at four years old that went from underneath this eye all the way to over underneath this eye. And you know what? Up until a few years ago when my wife Christy said, you're going to need glasses when you turn 40. I could see perfect. You know, and I can still see pretty good because basically I can see how good God is in my life. Amen. And if you can see how God, good God is in your life, you'll have 20-20 vision, right? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So just go through the days uh, that we have on this earth. Just let people know that God is your king. Yeah. Yeah. And God can be their king if they so choose. Yeah. Because we have that choice. Yeah. You know, it took me 29 years of my mom praying for me to make that choice. And she didn't call me and hound me about, you need to go to church, you need to do this. Yeah. She just said, I'm praying for you, son. Yeah. That's it. For 29 years, God reigned me in. Yeah. And now I reign him into my heart and make him the sole purpose. Because if it wasn't for him in my heart, my, me and my wife wouldn't have the wonderful relationship we have. 18 years we've been together, and uh, we've had no violent arguments. I mean, we don't, the only problems we have is just financial. You know? And God blesses us through that as long as we pay our tithes. You know, that's, there's one little thing I'll add in on this. You know, if you don't pay your taxes, what's the government going to do? They're going to throw you in jail, right? If you don't pay your tithes, What's God going to do? Okay? But we serve a mighty good God. He is wonderful. He is the king of my life. I want him to be the king of all your lives. You know? Because without him, we are lost. We are lost. And we just have to grab his heart and keep it with us. Because he loves us. No matter what we do. You know? No matter how many drugs I did in my life. No matter how, no matter how many people I've offended. He's always forgiven me. And he can forgive every one of you. Give God a hand.